Welcome back to another video where we are going to be learning some new technique tips, kind of. Basically, I did this a few months ago where I had a session and I spat out a couple of ideas that comes to my mind when I'm projecting or trying to climb boulders. We're going to do the same now, but with slightly harder boulders. There's a few here that I haven't done nor tried. And also a couple of easier ones where we can kind of get into the nitty gritty of movement, I guess. So yeah, we're going to start off with something that's actually my most important tip to literally everyone, and it's to always challenge yourself with the new and unique movements. And so here, we have two dual texture holds and a campus dyno to another dual texture hold. I know this seems absurd and something you might not want to learn, but just challenging yourself with these type of movements can really help you progress in all types of climbing, because you're challenging your brain to just learn how to move on the wall efficiently. Now that's a unique move. I think the starting move is one of the more unique moves I've done in a very long time. It's kind of like, you know, when paddle dinos first became a thing and you're just like, wow, how does this work? So big ups to the setter, Christopher. Uh, I just, just visionary, I love it. Next up, we have this uh, pink one. This is a step up in grade. So these are the white tip ones, which are like V8 and above. So this is gonna be a little bit harder. Actually, I have, oh, actually I have one important tip. So. While some athletes, like Alex Megos, might have you believe that conditions aren't a thing, it's only weakness. There's no bad conditions, there's only weakness. Some of us have a lot of weakness, and so we have to get our conditions ourselves. So I sometimes actually bring a fan, especially at this outdoor venue, because the sun is hitting pretty hard. I just blast it away, and let my skin cool down. And now we're good to go. That went actually surprisingly well. But there are some key components that makes it look, I assume that looked pretty easy, or thumbs up. It felt relatively easy because, uh, especially because I was applying a very specific technique that I do on compression and like uh, physical stuff, which is to really engage the back. And like, imagine that you're trying to squeeze your entire back portion together into this like little ball, like meatball kind of. So I'm like really trying to press everything in the back together and engaging it all so that it's like no points can really move. Because when you let your arms swing a bit more and dangle more, the compression moves can get a little bit harder. So the, the, what I do is basically try and squeeze it all together and like keep tight so that I can move my feet uh, and my lower extremity without a risk of like slipping off or like dropping the holds. Basically with pinches, I have this technique that I've used since day one, which kind of sounds absurd, but it's actually my key component to becoming stronger at pinches. And I actively think squeeze harder. I know it sounds like redundant to say in a way, but it does make a huge difference to just think like, can you get 5% more energy out of it? And like give in a little power scream if you have to, uh, just get anything to squeeze like a few more percentages extra. That's what happened when, I, when the right hand slipped. Uh, I like squeeze the left hand even like I actively thought squeeze this harder to keep myself on the wall 
and it's just what I need to be able to stay on, on them. So with pinches, everything you got, like focus your energy on that one hold and let the body do the rest. Okay, um, we only have one more white tape here. I have no idea what it's gonna be about, so let's give it a go first and then talk about the techniques I use after. That was uh, very, very surprising as well. The mantle just felt great. I just felt like I could move well there. I generally struggle a lot with mantles. So I figured after I'd be tired, I wouldn't know what to do, but it felt really good. Uh, the jump was surprising. I was, at first I went like palm pressing the hold and thought I'd be able to static it. But I realized right away that that would be too hard. So I went back with this double clutch. And the double clutch was like, it's a pretty interesting move because it's when you, generally when you do something that's hard, you lose so much energy, that you can't revert to trying something else. But I think if you, what I do there, like my tactic to climb those moves after having done a mistake, is to go back, take one deep breath, recenter myself and go again. And like really think that the move that I just failed at didn't matter, it doesn't count. So I go back, really reset um, uh, mentally, and then it's not, that much of a big deal actually because it's it's not like taking that one took so much energy from me but just i think the biggest issue with going out right first is losing your edge losing your like aggressive edge of being able to do these moves okay so we are stepping it down in grade to one that i i did in fact flash but it's a slab and it offers one of the most difficult components in climbing to me which is trusting these like dual textured footholds that have like a little bit of texture where you want to stand. I absolutely despise and love these at the same time because they challenge me to a degree that I like can't deal with. So it's very good for me to practice and I do practice it a lot. And I'll try and showcase a little bit of what I do to trust them. Like when I can actually do it, how does it look? So hopefully it'll be another like a retro flash on this one as well. I don't know if you caught the terror in my eyes, but it's very internal, it's there. The big thing is, what I do is I really focus on tensing up like this part of my foot high. And this gets you like the Elvis leg a little bit. But once you like learn to trust it, even though it's shaking, you can actually get a lot more force from the toe than you expect. And I often struggle with uh, trusting that force. But it, once you start doing it, you don't really fall off. Like that's the thing, I would say, I have like at least 30% more weight that I can get through my foot than I think I do. Like I, I'm, I, I'm, it's, it's much more common that I don't trust it and hop off than that I do trust it and fall off. So that's a very important aspect to these small jibs and how to work with them. It's like tensing up your ankle and then just trusting it with your life. And it's probably gonna, it's probably gonna stay. I mean, maybe that's not very comforting, but that's definitely what I do. I like trust it with my life and that it's gonna stick. And it very often do, does. So uh, yeah, that's it for this boulder. I think we'll move on to one more and then call it quits for today. So a lot of boulders can kind of be quite confusing. And this green one is one, is a good example of one for me, where I'm not really sure, just looking at it quickly, I'm not really sure where I wanna go. Like I could go right hand first, left hand first, when I study it a little bit closer, I see a lot of these details and I get a plan of attack. And it's very important to stick to that plan of attack, like 
to have an idea of exactly how you're gonna climb it in your head before you hop on. Because otherwise you'll get confused on the wall and just start climbing clumsily, which is maybe not the end of the world, but it does encourage bad movement patterns because you're allowing your body to climb in a way that's not really accurate and not what you had in mind. So you're only using intuition instead of using planning. And I think planning is one of those components that to me as a climber is by far the most important aspect to my performance. When I red point stuff, when I'm doing project outdoors, I have a like three page plan in my head of exactly how things are gonna be executed. So I go into all of these details, like how's the, how's the detail of the slope are gonna feel, how's this gas I'm gonna feel, which part of my muscle is gonna be tensed up, and all of these things I combine into my projects. And that's what makes me pretty good at projecting hard climbs uh, over time, because I practice so intensely this planning uh, practice, uh, <laughs> if that makes sense, yeah. So yeah, let's give it a go and see if my plan works or not. So that was an example of when I did try and execute a plan and it just didn't really pan out the way I'd envisioned it because I went for this undercling and it turns out that it was a little bit worse than I expected it to and so I couldn't maintain tension throughout my body and now I've learned a little bit from that because now I know okay I need to find a better position if I were to go to that but what else can I do? Well I can probably flip the left hand into an undercling or I can go right hand again to the joggy crimp outright which is what I think I'll do for the next attempt, because I know I'll be able to hold that hold with no big struggles. So I'll try and bump the right hand instead of going with the left hand this time around. And uh, that's gonna be the new plan. Let's see if it works. So I think this actually ended up becoming a pretty good example of exactly what I was talking about. More specifically, at the very end there, I had planned that there was gonna be a very high foot and that I was gonna be stressed in that position. I wasn't gonna be able to go like comfortably to the final jug. So I needed something that allowed me to just explode to it. And basically, I mean, that compression, I know I can pull from. So I just needed to plan to actually go for the final hole. Like I couldn't have any hesitation. And I did decide that from the beginning of it all. Like I was convinced that the last move is going to be explosive because the foot is so high that I won't be able to gently move, move around it. I hope you learned something from this session. I know sometimes these lessons or these advices are a bit abstract, like pinching harder, what does that mean? But I do think there's a lot to be learned from it. If you did enjoy the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, anything to keep you coming back. I'm about to hit 100,000 subscribers, which I'm extremely psyched about. So if you want to be one of those that helped me get closer to it, hit that sub button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, my homies.